Stop. Stop. <laughs> Guys, I can't believe how they expanded the Ant-Man lore. Everybody, go Google Ant-Man expansion if you're if you're interested <laughs> in up. learning more. <laughs> it's so not okay. <laughs> New from Marvel, Ant-Man expansion. <laughs> yikes, so yikes, out. yikes. So, uh, YouTube and all of these uh, platforms have been very lenient with the profanities. Oh, they, for they real? Ch- I can say motherfucker, like, right off rip? Yeah, that's how I'm starting the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby! Welcome back, It's the Story Wars podcast. We have cameras. We're back. We're live it's with happening. cameras, for sure. Absolutely. I'm sorry we've had difficulties, but it's okay. You're sticking around with us, and we, we appreciate, appreciate it. it. We say it very much appreciate it. Yeah, look, okay, Aww. look, it, look, man. Sometimes, you sometimes you're, you're in a you're in a whirlwind of you're in a glass cage of emotion, mm-hmm. and 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 the world is crumbling around you, and sometimes you just can't get the video put out. It happens, dude. It happens to the best of us, and it happened to us. But not this time. Not this time. We persevere at the StoryWorks podcast. We're we come through. Kratos' voice, we must do better. <laughs> <laughs> we must be better. <laughs> Holy shit. All right. So, today we are talking about All Quiet on the Western Front. We're getting heavy. We're getting into the war zone. We're talking World War One. It's nitty. The it's Great gritty. War. They called it great, but it was, was it? It was such a great war that we didn't need to have any more, ever. Isn't it funny how that works? No. It's not. No, it's not. <laughs> this is... Um, was a this is a great movie, man. Yeah, um, it was super heavy. Yeah, um, it, Netflix, like kind of surprisingly, Netflix does just drop those like sometimes. Sometimes they they can put out some good shit. This year they've definitely put out two pretty heavy hitters. Yeah, dude, Pinocchio. That's t- also the World Pinocchio. War One. <laughs> yeah, the World War One content, man. Uh, super interesting. Yeah. Well, Pinocchio is World War Two. Right, it's but World it War starts. The very yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Shit, man. Yeah. No. Two heavy hits from Netflix. This this movie was pretty incredible, man. I, I, I've been excited to watch it. Um. So yeah, I first heard about the movie really uh, when I saw that it won like four Oscars. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um. It won. It got nominated for like uh, nine. Oscars. Okay, that's see, that's that's impressive. Well deserved. Well deserved. Including Best Picture, it went up against Everything Everywhere All at Once. Uh, kind of faded to lose that battle. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it did win Best International Feature. For sure. Best Absolutely Cinematography, deserved. which like, yeah, the cinematography in this movie was phenomenal. It was a it was a super visual story, man. It was like really. All I, like the big like zooms that they would do. Yeah, and, and they just have you sitting in in moments. I really enjoyed. Yeah. That. Oh, we'll get into that. Yeah. Uh, it also won best original score. Okay. Yeah. So the soundtrack for it. Yeah. Which was I thought it was really good. The it, it almost had like the Birdman, like snare. The snare. Yeah, like the the drum rolls, the the marching kind of drum rolls. Yeah. Down there. Um, and then it also, if I remember correctly, had moments when it went, Bang! yes, it, yes, it would go all <laughs> fucking Inception on you and be, yeah. Um, and then it also won best production design. Oh yeah, I mean, just nailing a a, a period piece like that yeah, so heavily, man. for sure. I mean, all the, you know what I thought about so much throughout the movie, hmm. all the mud, yeah. All the fucking my muck man just he can't driving through. he can't stay clean. Absolutely not. Every single time his face is just absolutely covered. It's yeah no they, I mean they wanted to go for that realism like super hard yeah. like it's just such a gritty fucking movie man yeah I mean, man and it's I mean it's the whole it's based on like a book from like 
I don't know. 19, Early 1900s? Like, like 1920s, I think. It's like 1920s or 1930. Yeah. Uh, it was a veteran wrote or I it. think it was like, yeah, like 1928 or something like that because then it got turned into a movie. Yeah. In, in 1930. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was made by a veteran of World War One as like a big anti-war piece. Yes. About yeah. like the horrors of war and the loss of innocence and right. all that. Um it, it was, like, one of the books that got, like, banned and burned in, like, the 30s through the 40s. It was unpatriotic. Yeah. And you know what it means when people want to get rid of uh, books and, and education. Listen, it's, it's, a, it's totally fine. We have to burn these books. You don't want your kid you reading this. Why would your kid want to read this? Come on. That's weird. It's the greatest country ever. <laughs> Sounds familiar. Oof, oof, oof. All right, oof, moving oof, on. Oof, oof. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's really cool to um, the the night I, I watched the nineteen seventy nine. I would say yeah, as well. it's had two adaptations so far. Yeah, yeah, 1930, 1979, and twenty twenty two. Now, yeah, um, the nineteen seventy nine one definitely feels like it goes more with the novelization. Yeah. Um, it has more of a narrative voice behind it than what you see. There is like a narrator to it. There, yeah, Paul is narrating the whole thing. Our main character is Paul. Um, and you don't get that at all. And they, they decided not to do that in the 2022. Yeah. Which I thought also was really effective in a lot of different ways because you're just... it's You're just some, following... You're in the war and it's like who has time to think about it. It's very anything. personal, yeah. Yeah. It's just, and, but and then they do, but they do have moments where they'll like talk to each other about shit. For sure, yeah, they they have those personal moments with each other, and and you still get that in the seventy nine iteration as well. But it's a lot of like you get more of like Paul's brooding and his thoughts yeah, as yeah. he's going through it. You know, mm-hmm. we came in as just students, you know, coming to fight for our country. Yeah, and now we're all we fucking... were just excited to go to Paris. Just go do some war for about a month and a half, win it real quick, and then, you know, yeah. come back. We're about to win. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's the perfect time to go. Oh, God, dude. All right. It's so rough. General overviews of the movie, the 2022. Um, it, it, it was really good. It's, it's yeah, a long really, movie, really so set it. some time aside. You definitely got to strap in. Yeah, for sure. Um, it just, it looked beautiful. I really, really liked the visual language of the movie. Yeah, I, I liked, there were certain shots that I liked a lot. Um, the opening shot of the movie, cause they kind of cut back to it a couple times where yeah. it's that huge sweeping landscape shot and you just way, way over the horizon. Yeah. You can see the the f- flashes of of warfare yeah and the flares and stuff mm-hmm. coming down and but even at the very beginning just the shots of the trees i and that was my second one that i was going to bring up like the up like the down up shots mm-hmm. of the the tree the one tree yeah uh-huh i really liked that one a lot like, and Absolutely. they would they would kind of cut back to similar shots of that nature as well throughout the film listen i'm a man who loves tree shots? You want to? We love a good tree. You want to get a nice tree in a in frame for me? I'm here for it. Please, do more trees. Let's do it. I was super. I, I was super happy about that. Yeah. Seriously, though, it's like the cinematography is just incredible. It really holds you through the movie. Oh, absolutely. Because um, again, it's a long experience, but it's just it's beautiful to look. The at. The long though. shots down the. Just down the trenches or across the, yes. the no man's zone. Oh my god, dude! Perfect. 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 Oopsies. <laughs> I gotta turn my phone down here. Okay, you fucked up. You. I've done you a fucked up big time. Professional fucking bullshit. <laughs> Andrew gets up and throws his <laughs> headphones on the ground. <laughs> This is why no one watches the StoryWorks podcast. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Would you like me to interview you as a podcaster? Yeah, I, you know, I would like that <laughs> very much. Thank you. Oh, God. There's our Tim Robinson script for the day. 
So anyway, we would joke on set about how it was a cosmic gumbo. <laughs> Yeah, all, all quiet on the Western Front. Really, it's just—it's really uh, just—it's a—it's a mix of the exploitation films of the eighties, <laughs> mixed with the war films of the thirties. You know, we kind of we joked on set about how it was a cosmic gumbo. Oh man! <laughs> all right, so kind of moving in on it. Still, just general overviews. Love the characters. Um, yeah. Really great characterization in this movie. I love Paul. Paul's They're really, so Paul's like really good. Cat is really good. Cat is oh, I love Cat. Um, also the like this the B line that they added to the movie, like the train discussions about like how to end the war. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. like not that was like added for the movie. It's not like an, a part of the original story. Yeah. Yeah. I really liked um, the character f- that was negotiating the, German the end of the war. Yeah. Yes. He was like the one person who like realized the loss of life that was happening on both sides and was like, this is, we need, this is enough. enough yeah. This is enough. Yeah. I, I love it too. And it, and it's like they're negotiating with the French and the French is just uh, Obviously, the French is like they're like, yeah, no, we're winning. You have you want us to you, to end the war, so <laughs> yeah. you have to capitulate to our demands. Yeah, here's our terms. Sign it. <laughs> that's, and they're that's they're it. not nice terms. Oh no! <laughs> wow, yeah, it's it's really effective how they go a kind of a different route for anybody who has seen the '79 version. I mean, this is like there's there's enough differences that it's really a pretty fresh experience. Yeah. Um, I I really like those those negotiative angles that they mm-hmm. took, and and um, our man who who plays uh Frederick Zoller yes. in uh, in Inglorious Bastards. Yes, yes, he's uh, back. He was fantastic. I, I always love Daniel seeing him. Brule or whatever his name is. I think his name is Daniel Brule. Yeah, yeah. Um, who did he play in the Marvel universe? Um. Starts with a Z, doesn't Zemo? it? Zemo. Baron yeah. Zemo. Baron Zemo. <laughs> that was a really like in times of COVID, that was a that was an that was like a <laughs> meme that we needed. We needed that. The one one of the one of the good things that came out of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah. All right. So anything else you got before we kind of get into it? Um I can't really think of anything else that I would like to talk about um, before we get into like spoiler discussion. Really, mm-hmm. um, like the sound design was phenomenal. Yeah, like we mentioned it, it won an Oscar for best original score. Mm-hmm. That was really good, but like also the design itself. Like yeah, like it made you feel like you were in the trenches mm-hmm. when you know a mortar shell would come in. You're not hearing things for like. 45 seconds. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And the disorientation yes. of it in general. Um, Just beautifully done. Cinematography. Yeah. Amazing, as as we have said. Yeah, I was, I was really blown away by this movie. Absolutely. Yeah. Go check it out, man. If you got the time. If you yeah. got the time. It's on Netflix. You can just watch it in, you know, half just hour chunks. Night. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Ep- <laughs> ep- the episodic way. Yeah. Four episodes, 30 minutes apiece. There you go. More like Quentin Tarantino with The Hateful Eight. (laughs) Here's four episodes that are like an hour and a half long apiece. I don't know why (laughs) that movie, you know, I mean, The Hateful Eight's good, but like, I don't know why he picked that one to expand (laughs) upon. Maybe I'll try it someday. I yeah, I haven't seen the Hateful Eight. So oh, really? Maybe we should just watch the yeah, <laughs> do it like ultra a... extended version. Yeah, the ultra uh, Tarantino cut. Tarantino directed by Tarantino Quentin. Quentin and directed <laughs> by Quentin Directino. Directino, yep, there it is. All right, man, let's hop into this shit. This is it, this movie starts out like quick. They give you a, a good maybe thirty seconds of just yeah. peaceful, like you said in the beginning, tranquil shots 
of it being all quiet on the Western Front. <laughs> you don't hear it. it's it's just beautiful landscapes. And then we're following a soldier in the trenches like very quickly. Yeah, after what's that. his name? Oh, what's his name? Starts with an H. Heinrich. 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 Yeah. Which you you d- discovered is um, the negotiator's son. Yeah. Yeah, because he's got the picture of him on his yeah, desk yeah, while he's yeah. writing. And he says, you know, I, I lost my I son. I lost my son to this war. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pretty badass how they show it, man. That, that opening sequence actually was a great opener for a war movie that's trying to get this message across. Mm-hmm. So that's also a conversation that they have in the 79 film. Yeah. Cat tells the new recruits, um, he, he's just talking about the uniforms. He's like, keep them prim or something like that because they got to get reused after you. Yeah. So that's oh, like a line man. that he has. But but instead of, they do a lot of showing instead of saying Yeah. in, in the 22 film, whereas Show, they're, they're talking more yeah. about it in the 79 iteration. Um. So yeah, I love that sequence, man. You see him go out. That's he's just, like terrified. It's man. an incredible opening. He's he's scared, and then his boss is like, "Go!" And then the dude in front of him starts to climb up the trench, and is immediately <laughs> shot in the head and falls down. Dude. And then his boss is like, "Heinrich, go." What do you do? Cool. You go. Cool. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> and then yeah, he's he, he gets like one kill in. Maybe a couple. Maybe a couple. I think maybe he he does he like shoot. He dives more down. One. Yeah, I, I remember when he mud, shoots down or and dives he shovels down and he's up, shooting. Dude. dude, yeah, when he runs up with that shovel. And then you and then it cuts and you just see the title card. Yeah. Oh my god. And it's I love that it was like in German. I know it's a German movie, but the seventy nine wasn't. You know, I imagine the thirties one is in German. Yeah, they they remade it in America in seventy nine. I I really enjoyed that it was German as well. Super cool. Um, obviously, it's just it just feels it's more authentic. Yeah, <laughs> there is an English dub of it. Yeah, but on like, Netflix. But I'm gonna have the the real experience. Yeah, I was like, I'm I'm not, I'm not doing. The dub here, man. We we don't we shit. don't do dub here. We we're we're sub. We're 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 here. We're we're reading as we're as we're watching the movie. We're 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 keeping our eyes peeled on the screen and on the text. Multitask, dude. You can do it. We can do it. You can do it. You can do it. It's worth it. It's a great experience. They did great. The actors did phenomenal. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Paul's actor was phenomenal. And it was his that's his first role acting huh? in a movie. He's he's what? done he's done like theater, but this was his first film role. I did not know that, dude. Yeah. I was uh watching a couple interviews with him this morning, and yeah, he mentioned how it was a pretty, you know, it's a, a different, ex- a very different experience coming from theater to like film. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Especially to this capacity, man. Yeah. Um, but he did phenomenally. Dude. Yeah. Like that's, that's really fucking impressive, mm-hmm. actually. Um, he, he, it's a pretty big jump going from just doing theater to film. And damn, dude, yeah. he nailed it. Shit. That's a big project to take on. Yeah, and and just again beautifully done by him. He yeah. was able to portray. I and so yeah, in the interview he was talking about how because they would shoot scenes out of order. Right. Yeah. Um, and he he took to he made a like a Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. That was like, okay, here's the scene. This is the like emotion that I'm trying to capture. Like how, like how, how angry are you? How sad are you? Okay. Um. Like what is happening to make you feel this way? And then when you get on set and you're doing like scene twenty five, okay. Uh, this is when yeah. you find the glasses. Oh shit! Okay. You know, or something like that. Yeah. And it's like okay. 
turn like you you know you look at the spreadsheet and you're like okay I'm supposed to be you know so sad like feeling yeah. these kind of ways and it helps them kind of dial the knobs a little bit yeah. and 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 figure out how he's supposed to be feeling. God, I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> you said I'm so sad. <laughs> you fucking triggered me, dude. I'm so sad because, because my, my uncle, uncle killed my dad. Hamlet. That's, that's fucking, fucking terrible. awful. Ah. <laughs> uh, ah. Uh, uh, watch the Shakespeare spit. 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 Watch Shakespeare spit. Watch the Shakespeare skit from the History of the World Part 2, Episode 1, dude. Also, just watch History of the World Part 2. Also, just watch History of the World Part 2. It's got Mud Schmuckman. Sh- <laughs> mud Schmuckman? Schmuck Mudman. <laughs> Schmuck Mudman. Sorry. Jack Black sings a song uh, as he plays the character, the character, the real-life history figure Joseph Stalin. He's not real. What are you talking about? <laughs> They make him the butt of every joke, and he's just like, he takes it, but then under his breath, he'll be like, one day I'll kill all of you. Oh, my fucking God. (laughs) And they're like, what did you just say, Joseph? And he's like, um, nothing. (laughs) Jesus. Jack Black had to have been so good in that. And then when Lennon starts to die, he, like, suffocates him, and is like, oh, no, he's dying. (laughs) It's my turn to leave now. Oh my god, dude. Holy Christ. It's pretty funny. I'm I'm ready. I'm ready. Um so that's that's really cool though, uh seeing how he pre planned for those yeah, for those how emotions. to get in how to get into that's that that's another thing is shooting out of order. You know, that can yeah. be disorienting. Exactly, for yeah. That's that's one of the I mean, that's one of the talents that comes with getting into acting for film like that. It very often you have to shoot out of order, so it's like you got to get in that space quick yeah. for the scene to yeah. start. So that's really cool how he how he did that. Definitely succeeded, man. Oh, for sure, for I mean, sure. All the shit that he had to do, like getting down in the mud like that, just trudging through it. Literally, like we're not shitting you. Caked. His face is like caked. In My mud. man was buried alive in a mortar strike. Yeah. The bunker he was in caved in on him. Dude, and... that scene. I love that scene. Where. The one dude tries to leave. He's like freaking out. He's and he just gets instantly. Up and like, Where the fuck are you going? Like, yeah. He's like, I'll be right back, sir. And he's like, no, I just, I can't be in here. I can't be in here. And then he runs out and is like immediately like blown apart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. And then his dude, and then his friend is like, I'm scared. Paul, I'm scared. God. He's like, my mom, she warned me. Or she, her, her biggest concern was making sure that I was eating healthy. Man. Like, just like nailing in that, that point of like these, the people back at home did not they understand. Don't know what's going on yeah. Yet. They really think that they are winning. Like, they think they're winning, and they think that like war is cool, yeah, and fun, and you know it's it's their like right to do what they're doing. Yeah, you think they stress that mostly through that like general character. I think it's through the general character, and I also think like back in the beginning, mm-hmm. uh, they show he's at class, like he's in school or whatever. Yeah, and his like principal or teacher or whatever gives them that big speech about, uh, like, you know, German nationalism and yeah, mm-hmm. how they should all be, like, happy to be, like, fine German soldiers and blah, Serving blah, blah. Serving the fatherland, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, so I think that helps kind of drill in that point, too, of, like, this this man is literally sending an entire generation of children it's the whole it's like the whole graduating class he's like all of you need to go enlist into the war for 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 germany it's basically on yeah it's on that fucking guy and all these kids are eating that shit up they're like oh fuck yeah they're hyped up man 
Because it sounds, yeah, you're right. I mean, that, they're making it sound. I mean, Paul so literally, dangerous. he like the movie starts out and they're all surrounding Paul and they're like, oh, are you ready for this, Paul? I can't believe you're going to be the only one not going. Because yeah. his mom didn't sign the fucking slip for him. Yeah, dude. And then he, him and his buddies are like, nah, just give me a pen and I'll sign it myself. I forgot about that, dude. So like he enlists on like faulty pretenses. Fucking Christ. But he's like happy to do it, man. Yeah. Because he's so like indoctrinated with the mindset. For sure. For sure, man. Um in the nineteen seventy one nineteen seventy nine one, it's it's um different in that like it shows more of the class, you know, it shows more yeah. of their, their time in class. Mm-hmm. It shows more with his family, like it shows Paul's family. Yeah. And he's at dinner with his father, and his father is like, his father's like praising him. He's like, I, you know, I wish, I wish that I could go serve the fatherland in this no. glorious time of Trump, no. like triumph. Yeah, yeah. And he's like absolutely putting him on a pedestal. Um, and Paul is just like dead. Well, this is like before the war, so Paul's like, hell yeah, Pop. Oh, Let's fucking yeah, go, yeah, dude. yeah. Okay, okay. Shit me out. And then he does return. He gets to come home in the 1979 one, and he pretty much faces all the people that were like, go, go, go. You got this. And then he's just like hollow. Like they, they spend time on that yeah. return. Like, like, like talking, like people coming up to him and being like, oh, dude, here's. Yeah. Oh, I can't believe you guys haven't finished up the war yet. Why don't you try doing this tactic? Because, you know, I'm, I'm you know. Yeah. I'm I'm licensed to give war advice. Well, he's sitting at a table. Like I think he gets invited to a table with like three older like gentlemen. They look higher class. Okay. And they're okay. talking war tactics and war strategy. Oh no no no! War is all about this kind of yeah. offensive. And he's like, no no no! This is how you do a war. And then fucking Paul is like, just hollow, dissociating, just like eight hundred percent. And he goes and he talks to his teacher again. Yeah? Yeah. Um, who is played by uh, the fucking, the guy who plays Michael Myers' doctor, Dr. Loomis. Oh, wow. Halloween, which is kind of nuts. That surprised me when I watched it. That's pretty crazy. Pretty fucking cool. Um, he played the role perfectly. He was the guy who was like, you know, serve the fuck. Go out man. there, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Paul comes back and he's like, there's two of us left. And the teacher's like, well, I knew you would be one of the ones that, that would push through, Paul. Good good work, Paul. It's so bad, dude. And good Paul's job. Like, hey, great, great. Hey, there's only two of us left alive. Hey, gr- you keep up that great work. Literally, dude. He's like, yeah, come on. Yeah, good job, buckaroo. Oh, my God. What the hell, man? Oh, yeah, it's fucked up. Just more examples of how that one kind of tells more through these conversations. Mm-hmm. This one, you know, Paul doesn't, you're waiting for him to get that chance to go home in this one. He doesn't get and it. And he does not get it at all. They show. Which was heartbreaking. But, I mean, you do get moments of him, because, I mean, you don't see his family at all in, no. in the movie. No, once. you just see his and I think that's like stressing the message that from here on out, this is his family. Yeah, like he, his and friends. and so and and so they capitalize on that. Yeah, because they have a lot of scenes of like him and the squad together. Yes, where you know they're at like once they leave like the 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 trenches and they kind of pull back a little bit. Yeah, get and some slice of life stuff. Yeah, they're like in that kind of like tent encampment, and yeah. they're in like they're in that one building cooking food. Mm-hmm. And uh, like having a laugh, drinking beer, and uh, just just kind of living, bonding. Yeah. Like they're talking about shit, and yeah. like the one dude is like, "Well, I'm gonna become," or he's like, "Oh, well, when the war's over, I'm staying with the army because mm-hmm. you know it's three meals a day, and yeah. I and they they respect me more than I would be respected otherwise because he was like Polish." Yeah, yeah. And then they're like, "Dude, they're never gonna make you an officer because you're Polish." And he just is like he just like looks at him for a minute, and it's yeah. basically just like, "Well, a guy can dream, can he?" Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's fucked up. But like, 
it's it's just that you know they're all bonding, talking about yeah. like, their things, their families, kind of being vulnerable. You know. For, yeah, I mean, Cat gets a letter from his uh, wife, and he was like a shoemaker. Yeah. So he doesn't know how to read, mm-hmm. and so he has Paul read him the note. Yeah. And it's like a very sweet, tender moment where Paul learns, you know, a lot about Cat through this letter. Yeah, that he other that cat otherwise like would not come forward with information wise. Right, and this is like a long moment where you sit with them and just kind of experience. And they're taking a shit. And they're also taking a shit. They're taking a shit. It's pretty fucking funny, honestly. It's it's pretty funny. Uh, You know, they walk out and Paul is already shitting, and then Cat just drops his pants and sits next to him and hands him the letter. I guess we've lost that sense of male comfort, you know? We can't just do that anymore. <laughs> like, I can't be sitting right here. No, no, we like, can't be sitting here pantsless taking shits. If if it was like Robert Eggers that directed this, you would be hearing the shit. <laughs> you would be hearing the shitting. Stop. <laughs> yeah, and if it was uh, Brandon Cronenberg, it would you would be seeing the shit hit the fucking oh, floor. Oh, God, dude. Oh, no. <laughs> You're not, wrong. You're not wrong. What if this directed? Yes, new segment. Yeah. That's funny. But yeah, no, it's like a very, you know, tender moment between them where he just reads the and he reads the whole note and then Cat kind of fills him in just a little bit mm-hmm. on it cuz you know, you're not really you don't want to ever really talk about your son dying. Yes. That was like they're bonding, but then you get that information. You're like, he's like mm. reading the note, and his 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 wife is talking about how she's like excited for him to come back, and yeah, blah blah blah. And then he pauses reading, and then he like looks at Cat, and then continues, and it mentions how when he comes back, they'll go to like the tree where their son's buried at, and it's like a very tender, sweet moment between the two of them. Yeah, they're, they're just he kind of talks about it. Um, but it's also intercut, you know, you get moments of, I can't remember his name. I don't think it's Franz. Okay. But what, yeah, it's when, when they're at the, the, like in the tent encampment Yeah, and they see the, the girls, the girls, uh, the yeah. French, the French girls yeah. passing by. Um, and they haven't seen women in like, they have not seen a women. long time. I mean, well, I mean, they're like. 17. Yeah. They're like all 17, yeah, except for Cat. Cat's the only one. Well, Cat and he's, then he's the old And then like also. the the Polish guy, I think he's are like the right. older ones. But yeah, yeah, Cat yeah, is like their like the the yeah. the one with the most rank in their squad. Right, yeah. He's the one who like He's a lot older than the 79 one. Is he? I was yeah. going to say he's the one that like when they are in the trenches, he he meets Paul and uh Gives him bread, I think. Yeah, at the kind of, kind of and the start and he, and he's the one who's like, "There's gonna be a raid tonight." He's like, "Just prepare yourself." Yeah, it's the first night that they're there, dude. Yeah, it's crazy. Ugh. But uh, yeah, so the the French girls show up, and then one of them is like, oh, "I'm gonna go shoot my shot," and he walks over there, and then he just he leaves with them. He's like. Au revoir, my friends. Why? Like, why was I convinced at the, in the moment that he was not? I know. I know. Legit. I thought he was deserting. I thought he was like, "This shit's fucked up. I'm leaving." Dude, he's like, "Yeah, no, I'm gonna go live with these women." But no, he just he just went to go. You know, my man just had to get his rocks off. Yeah, dude, for sure, for sure. And he comes back in the middle of the night with a damn yeah. like handkerchief uh-huh. or whatever. Yeah. With her scent on it, and everybody's pat just passed. He's just like here. You, he he pauses the first. He he, he shows up to Paul, and he's like, "Here you go, Paul. Take a whiff." <laughs> yeah. And then someone hears him do it, and he's like, "Well, I want to take a whiff." And then everybody yeah. is just like, just "Pass it around, him. pass it around." That's one of those <laughs> like kind of cute tender moments. Um, in the in the seventy nine one, they're all in a river. Yeah. Um, and they see the three girls walking by, and they're trying to communicate with them, and they say, "Come over tonight." Oh, and Paul and two others. I can't remember which other ones he brought with him, but all three of them go, dude, and they all fucking get some. Nice, nice. But then it just cuts, and then they're back to the front, I think, yep. after that. Yeah. 
God. That shit's so funny. But yeah, when I first saw the, the dude leaving, I was like, he's out of well, here. Well, yeah, because he literally he's says, gone. like, goodbye. Yeah, dude. He's like, Avita Zane. Avita Zane. Now, normally I would say Avita Zane, which means until I see you again. But because I have no wish to ever see you again, to you, Mr. Candy, I say goodbye. Dude, I fucking love that <laughs> line so much. Sorry, I just watched Django. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, you just like un- unlock the capsule. <laughs> Ta- dude, that was amazing. Thank you for that. And now <laughs> I'm going to go watch Django. Dude, I fucking love Django Unchained. Django! Yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. No, no, you're good, you're good. Um, I, I really like... During this segment, I mean, I like it at first. It ends up fucking sucking at the end. Yeah. When they get the goose, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. The old farmer. He's like They're showing him They're just getting how to into get shenanigans. It. Yeah. Yeah. He boosts him over the fence. That's their first night of eating good in like. Yeah. They get the goose and they, they cook that shit and they eat it. And it's. They're just like. Huh. <sighs> oh. It's like they haven't had. Like, they've been eating like rock bread. For weeks, yeah. they make it like a really hard point too that the French are eating good. Yeah, like wh- one when of the they, first when, things once they, they do. Ch- as I say, once they charge across into the enemy bunker, uh, yeah, they find good food and they just start eating. Like in the middle of the raid, they yeah. just stop fighting and there's they like start. Five eating. of them in that room. They're like, there's like sausage, just fucking like nice, fresh bread. And he's just like, just let me fucking stuff my face. And if I die in 30 seconds, I'll die fucking happy, dude. Call that a last meal. <laughs> that's fucked <laughs> up. Uh, but that's another one of the things, like, with the negotiations. They're like, you guys are, like, you're losing, you're starving, you're fucked. Yes. Like, <laughs> Just sign the damn treaty. Yeah. Shit is insane. We man. can have an armistice. I, I hate how that, that moment with the goose, though, turns into his... Fucking it's, demise yeah, at the end, and it's not. And it's not even. He wasn't even the one that like hopped the fence that time. I know, dude. It was Paul that time, and I almost thought Paul. And was he literally go. said he was like, "It's your turn this time." Yeah, yeah. That damn like it's like the it's the kid from fucking Infinity Pool is what it was. Yeah, dude. They're on their way, like, home. But it turns out they weren't on their way home. That's where that movie really starts to fuck with you, dude. It's like... Like, okay, the war's ending. We're going home. And then the general is like... The treaty goes into effect at 11 a.m. By the time you'll get there, uh, you'll have 15 minutes to win the war. (laughs) We're not giving up this piece of land. What? Paul is just like, like all of his friends have died at this point, and he was about to go home. His his one buddy, um, crop, mm-hmm. uh, is burned alive. Oh, ah, dude, is that the first introduction of the flamethrowers? Yes. Like, oh my god, when they're like, okay. Warfare is advancing. That's when he spends the night in the trench after stabbing the dude. And then he's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's when you're like, that's when you're like really directly confronted with like the brutal reality of war. Like the first night when he was in the trenches, you know, it's rough and that's, it's terrible. And that, that also is the reality of war. But like, the personal aspect of it, like actually taking a man's life. Yeah. Cause you're not, well, you're not think you can't, you don't have time to think about it. No. When you're in, in survival mode, no. when Even they're both, when you're just hanging I mean, around the trenches, you're in the trenches. And I mean, something yeah. When they're both, when they're both in that, in that crater together, they both come at each other. Yeah. And it's, oh, that's they're funny. both trying to kill each other and he almost dies. Mm hmm. But, you know, he still has that guilt after he stabs him and he's just bleeding oh out. God. 
it's so much worse in this one than it is in the 79 He's one. like, friend, friend, friend. Here, comrade, comrade. Dude, it's like nighttime when it happens. That dude's dying all night yep. long. He spends the night, yeah, in the crater while this man just bleeds out. It's like, this is this is where, like, he has to see what this means. Like, this is, he's never had the chance to just, he's, it's not like a chance, but he's he's forced to, like, look yeah, at the he's consequences. Being, yeah, he's being forced to confront what, yeah, the consequences of war. Yeah, and he's, not, at, dude, he at first, like when he's, like, just shut up, shut up, shut up, he shoves mud in his mouth. Mm-hmm. And then in the morning he's like, he like breaks mentally, and he's just like, I he's like, I'm gonna help you, I'm gonna help you, I'm gonna help. You. He tries to, yeah. It's it's insane. It's 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 insane. That's probably one of my favorite moments in the film. Although it's like the hardest to watch. Oh, absolutely. Um, the way that dude is just dying is really rough. No, dude, you want to talk about rough pe- ways and people in which people die. The the Polish guy. Uh, Fuck! What happens to he's him? He's the one that he when him and Cat get back to, uh, like the the church town or whatever. Oh God! And he's he's one of the injured, and he they're he like his he, leg he, amputated. well he doesn't get it amputated not yet but okay they look like he's like I got hit a couple times in the leg above the thigh or something yeah. like that and they look at it and it's like here it's like right there yeah and just deep gashes and mm-hmm. it doesn't it's not something that like it doesn't look good yeah it's going to require like a complete amputation yeah in order to save him and he's like i'm not gonna be an amputee can you go get me some food and paul's like yeah i'll go get some food and he gets the food and he comes back and he's like did you get the cutlery He's like, yeah, I got the cutlery. And he gives him the fork, and he just... He's like, we got double portions. He's man. like, yeah, we haven't got you double portions. Him and Cat are like, we'll get double portions for, for, for Seb or whatever yeah. his name is. Oh, my God. And they give it to him, and before... Like, they start eating, and then before they can even realize what's happening... Talk about sound design. God. He takes the fork and just... <sighs> Dude, I was like... Shot. I was in shock. Yeah, no, I was like, <laughs> like, what the fuck? Oh my god, that was that was hard to watch. Yeah, uh, I locked it away, dude. And then they're just like, why, why, why? Yeah. Oh my god. He just he wasn't gonna live. Like that like happens, that. and then like the next day is when, uh, cat dies. Yeah, that happens. It's like they're on their journey home. You know, they're walking back. And as soon as they stopped at that farmer's house, I was like, you can't. I'm like, you're really going there again? You can't. And then they do. And they succeed. They only get eggs. But yeah, they get eggs, but they just fucking eat that shit. Yeah, I mean that Cat's still... literally like, he cracks it and it's just like. It's like, I don't give a shit, dude. This is better than what. <laughs> and then they're just walking down the road and Cat's like, I gotta go fucking piss, dude. Yeah. I really gotta go pee. I'm gonna go walk like a mile away from from camp, and I'm gonna go piss. God damn it, man! Don't walk away from from Paul. You have the it's it's the it's the the BPS for a reason. The buddy piss system. The buddy piss system, man. Always, always use the buddy. Always, piss system. always use the buddy piss system. If you're in, if you're damn in the it. woods in the middle of World War One, you pee with a buddy around you. Doesn't matter if it's ending. Doesn't matter if the war ends in twenty four hours. There's still twenty four hours. There's still twenty four hours, and isn't even a fucking soldier, dude. I was just about to say it doesn't even need to be a soldier that does it. It can be a fucking small little kid. Man, he's like, you fucking seriously took my eggs? Are you absolutely shitting me, dude? After you took our goose, we're starving too. And then it, that sucked. Y- you're in Paul's perspective as you just hear the gunshot. Yeah. Oh, it's brutal. He definitely killed that kid also. Oh, yeah, for sure. Unless the kid ran away. Unless the kid just shot him and ran away. But I think when Paul asked him what happens, he's like, forget about it. Yeah. That seems fucked up when he's carrying him. And then he gets gets back and sets him down, and the doctor's just like, 
Good job, dickhead. He's been <laughs> dead for 10 minutes. Could have saved your energy, man. <laughs> Good Dude. job, dickhead. <laughs> but, I mean, the doctors are just so... They're just backed up. It's every day. They're like, okay. There's um, new corpses. I've amputated fucking 18 legs today, dude. It's fucked Get up. Get this guy out of here. Get this corpse away from me. I don't need it here. Oh, it sucks. That shit's so fucked up, man. He was so close. They were all so close. No, nobody makes it. I, I, I hoped at least somebody. Yeah, would I was it really out. hoping that Paul would make it out, but but that no. ending scene. Was good old, fucked. good old fucking Wario mo- looking motherfucker, Doctor Robotnik. He's dickhead. literally Doctor Eggman. Yeah, dude. Like, what the fuck? Uh, it's like, no, nah, we gotta go. We gotta go. Do you guys want to? How do you want to end the war? As losers or as? Do you want to return as champions? Come on, as dude. heroes. But he's having conversations with, like, his assistant where he's like, my father was born in the right era. War. Victory. Dick. Yeah. Ass. And no, and he's like, yeah, my father was a decorated officer. I'm a uh, decorated officer. You don't see him on the battlefield once. That's the thing, man. He is way back in, the in like, a, a v- protected villa Eating fine dining the entire movie. This shit was like the menu. Yeah, dude, yeah. It's like they had fucking Chef Slowick in the back. Yes, Chef. When he's just stuffing his face. Yeah, and he goes. Just just fucking just on the floor. He calls the dude back to fill his cup and then he's just like, leave the bottle. Yeah, I'm getting drunk tonight and sending but the, it's literally, thousands of men to their it's death It's literally tomorrow. every single fucking time. He goes... Whew. Somebody's going to slip. Like, that's like got to be like an OSHA violation, right? Right, dude. Somebody should have got his ass. I think you can get sued. You can't do that. <laughs> hey, you can't do that. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, no, it's fucked up. He gets Paul gets back, and then General comes out onto balcony and says, "Go, go back." No, nope. yeah, you guys you see right that trench out. way, wait, 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 going right back out, and you're gonna go take about a hundred feet of land before the end of the war. We need it. We need the W, boys. It's fucked up, and it, but like, and he almost survives it. He almost does. And he's like in he's in like autopilot. No, he's he's like gone. Yeah. Like he's like not there. He's just mentally uh, yeah. Mentally he's he's n- he's not present for these actions. He is dissociated to like the point of no return. For sure. My man is just so numb trying to end this fucking war. He kills like a bunch of people too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then goes into that bunker. Yeah, they do this this final raid. You know, he's just fucking piling through. Dude, as they're sneak, they're like walking up. Yeah, yeah, no, because they they do have that like stealth advantage. Yeah, well, because the French are like, oh yeah, the war is gonna end in like a couple hours. Yeah, cool. That was a great shot when it starts slow and then they, and then start the, the one the one like French sergeant or whatever hears it and he's just like. Oh, fuck. Enemy attack. He looks at his clock and he's like, are you shitting me? Attack. It's fucked up, man. It's real fucked up, dude. But yeah, he goes down in that bunker and he sees the, he gets, he does, he he sees the one dude that's like unarmed, right? I think so. And he's like about to not kill him, I -hmm. think. But then. He bayonet him. Well, from behind, there's another guy in the room that's, like, behind him that they, like, didn't see. So this guy, the first guy that he sees is who he scuffles with. Yeah. Because they get into, like, almost They get a into, like, fight. a big fight. Yeah. yeah. And then, but then it, like. They stop. It cools down. And he, yeah. like, they look at each other for a minute. And, you they, know, you almost think that Paul's going to, like, like, the, yeah, like, he sees him and he's going to have, like, another, like, comrade yeah. moment where yeah. he's just, like, I'm done. Like. We can both survive. This war. Yeah. In a minute. Yes. And then you get from behind just... Oh, it was... Oh, I'm so fucking mad. 
I didn't like look up at the book or anything. I didn't know how it was going to end. Oh God! Dude. He gets stabbed, and then uh, it's literally he gets stabbed, and like twenty seconds, not even twenty seconds later, it's so fast. The horn blows, and you hear like speak, the like, war and the two dudes that the two Frenchmen just walk out. Yep, they they st- he gets impaled with a bayonet, and then he just walks out, and it just ends with Paul walking up the stairs into the light. Yeah. Of of the outside, which was an incredible shot. It was. It was. It's sad, very sad. But uh like he was so close. Yeah, he comes out, he sees the light and he's just like And then it cuts to the kid that cuz there's cuz he's been, you know, in the war at this point for like a year and a half or yeah. something like that. And that's enough to make you bit like pretty much. And so he's like the new cat. Yeah. And he's during this raid, he saves the life of a kid, like a, rookie. Like a kid, like a him, recruit, yeah. him from a year ago. Right. And after you know, Paul walks out on into the light, it cuts, and we pick up from the perspective of that like new young kid who is doing the exact same thing that he did the first night, like the morning after the raid. It's like a reincarnation. Yeah, shit, dude. he wakes, he because at the after the first raid of the movie, he's given the, the job of going and collecting dog tags from the dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, this new recruit kid has also been given the task of picking up dog tags from the dead. And he finds Paul. Finds your boy. And picks up the scarf. He picks up the scarf because Paul. We didn't mention that. Yeah, Paul keeps that handkerchief on him. Well, yeah, because because the Polish guy gives it to him. Yeah, and because he gives it to him, and then he and then Paul is like, is he, is he alive? He's like, is Franz alive, or did Franz die? And he's yeah. just like, yeah. But I don't think the kid takes Paul's dog tag. I, th- I think he just takes the just the handkerchief, the handkerchief, and yeah, and then it goes back to just shots of like the woods again. You know, mm-hmm. you get it's that quiet. that big. <laughs> it's all quiet on the Western Front. <laughs> <laughs> Sobs uncontrolled. Yeah, a- absolutely beautiful, dude. Beautiful movie, man. Very heartfelt. Incredibly sad incredibly uh raw and brutal yes i mean absolutely the the set design like i mean the bodies there's a body like up in in a tree at one point that they're like really they're like i can't believe he got blasted that far oh my god the brutality man um in in the 79 iteration so so paul goes home like i said yeah and he's just hollow. It, in, in the same way that he's not the same person by the end of the new one, he's not the same. He realizes he's not the same person when he goes home. Mm-hmm. And he actually ends up writing this whole letter to his family that says, I am not, I can't exist here. And my home is yeah. with my brothers on the front line. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's just completely changed. It's almost like the sometimes. You know, when, when prisoners struggle to like readapt to, to society. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, after just I mean, going that's a, through that. I mean, that's that's a thing, man. Like in yeah. World War One, they called it shell shock. It's just okay, it's yeah. basically just like PTSD. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's just, yeah, like you can't. Can't get out of that mindset. Mm-hmm. And, and it really just hits like it really hits on the point of how these people are talking. And he's just like this isn't normal. And then they don't understand anything. Mm-hmm. Like, so he writes this note and he's like, I, I got to go back. Um, this isn't me anymore. But at the same time, he goes to the front line, he goes back and it shows him he's walking down the trench and he's, he's like putting his hand on his comrades, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, but then he, he hears a bird chirping on a tree. And he pulls out his notepad, and something that he did in school was that he would he would sketch, sketch and draw things. And he was drawing a bird in class at the beginning of the film, and his teacher's like, "You're a dreamer, Paul." Oh, uh, okay. And he comes over. He's like, "It's not time to be. I'm talking about the fatherland right now. It's not time to be to be doodling." 
and so yeah, he hears this bird and he's doodling and he just he's he's drawing a picture and he's smiling and then he literally just gets domed, shot in the back of the head because he because he like takes a step up to like see the bird up into the trench or yeah. out of the trench. God, not even that much though, man. Like it had to have but been his helmet like, just barely popped. Well, just how how in in the the twenty twenty two one he yeah. does get shot in the head, but his helmet takes the hit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Made that the, so that definitely had to be a reference for sure. Oh man! Yeah, his helmet actually took it, but in this one, man, yeah. And then he's just face he's face down, down in the in mud. Face down in the dirt. <laughs> God no, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's good. It's good. Um, and then as you see him fall down, like it's like the newspaper. Headline for that day is all quiet on the Western yeah. Front, but it's not. It's not all quiet on the Western Front. Uh, so, dude, yeah, both both iterations were fantastic. I'm even interested in going back and checking watching out the, the 30s, the 30s one. one. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think if you ever want to watch the 79 one, I totally watch it again. It's really good. Oh yeah, really good. Do you have a preference between the two that I you've don't seen? Know if I can pick, man, it's really hard. Yeah, because it's just there's like. They're both good in their own aspects. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah, it, and they both hit the points so effectively in such different ways. That's what's so interesting. It's hard for me to pick. I really love them both. That's fair. Um, I like artistically. I really like the twenty twenty two version yeah, better. Yeah, um, the color palette is incredible. It's just like the dark blues, mm-hmm. um, harsh reds. That Those dark flares. brown for that mud, and yeah. then, oh my god, the flares! I love the flare scenes. Um, the the nineteen seventy nine palette is really tan and brown. Yeah, it's not as dark, muddy, but you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. But it was just things were filmed differently back then. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, both really good, man. I can't pick. I can't do it. I can't. That's They're fair. Both so good for for different reasons. <laughs> um. We should definitely watch it. I'm down for sure. For sure. All right, guys. What would you What would you give? All Quiet on the Western Front 2022 out of ten. Yeah, we gotta rate that shit, man. I think <sighs> I'm at like a nine. I, I was gonna say a nine too. It's It's really good. It's really good. I, I really really enjoyed this movie, and I'm not like super into like war movies yeah. a whole lot. Yeah. Um, They're hard to watch, man. Yeah. But I I really, really got into this one. I liked it a lot. Yeah, for sure. I think a nine is a good choice. And I would I would give the 79 version a nine as well. Nice. Nine out of ten. Um, check them both out, man. Let Absolutely. us know what you guys think. Yeah, comment. Is there, Has anyone seen the 30s one? Yeah, let us know. One of you out there, I'm sure. For show. Sure. All right, guys. This was the StoryWorks podcast. I'm Zach Gosen. I'm Andrew Hall. Until next time. Sayonara. I'm over-caffeinated and over-stimulated. Aww.